Welcome to the next topic and in this topic we will going to discuss about the loops. Loops are very important in any programming language be it Python or C, C++, Java or anything but you will find loop everywhere. So very in important that you understand what loops are and we will try to keep it simple so that you will understand most of it within the Julia about how you can write loops like for loop within Julia or the while loop and uh, easily perform the data manipulation operations or any advanced machine learning related operations. Many times it has been you, it, you will be using um, for, for the task that you have in the hand. All right, so without uh, much delay, let's start with first for loop. So to write the syntax of for loop, what we need to do is we need to write uh, for and in the previous video we created something like uh, sports brand or for example if I just go up um, that's what we discussed uh, all right let me just close this yeah sports brands like this so what we'll do is we will try to loop it through by creating a sports brand variable so what we are doing we are not using the previous one we are saying sports brand in in this array which is adidas comma nike comma puma now this variable can be anything like for example i have mentioned sports brand or i can mention s i or anything it is dynamically typed whatever you will write over there it will going to basically take a type of that and then you will be able to process the information all right so let's keep it with the i itself so that it is not confusing you with the previous uh, declared variable and then after that you need to write and it is a default indentation that ha it has taken and the print print i and after that come here at the start for and end should match together and we write and then we press shift enter so what it has given us adidas nike puma and there is no space so to add the space what we can do is come over here write a space like this and press shift enter or control enter now there is a space so you are saying that this operation you don't have to write like three times print statement with for statement you just write one print statement and your information is coming over here so if you need it in a row with a space you can do like this or you can write the another print command which is print ln and in that case i think because it will be a new line every every time there is no issue so print ln will print it in a new line altogether so that's one of the very very basics of how you can loop through the variable so think like this is like a for example the array that we declared or the dictionaries we will see in the future or maybe in this video if i have covered uh, how you can iterate through dictionary or tuple and uh, make best use of the looping that is available now one thing is that you have the values like this that means three different sports brand sometimes we may have to uh, process each character for example if we have to loop through the value adidas that means first it should print a then d then i then d then a and then s you can also do that by using for i in adidas so now i'm not specifying anything like uh, array or something but i'm saying this print ln and then i end so what it will do it will loop through each word of adidas and print it in a new line so as you can see like this this is how you can achieve it this is really useful whenever let's say you are processing the textual information right but the same can be applied to uh, in cases like uh, numbers if you have numbers within the array or with the if it is a big number you may want to format it or something you can do like this now let's see how you can iterate through tuple this was an array and uh, now 
let's take a tuple example for t in 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 maybe. So this is a tuple because it is, uh, it is not a big bracket like this and it's a small bracket which is a notation for tuple and then you can print t and then comma and then put and to it and one two three four five right or if you need in a new line like we have seen it earlier print a line and one two three four five so this is how you can loop through tuple which is sometimes very helpful when you are working with uh, tuple related information then you have the dictionaries most of the time you will see that you are working with the array that we saw it here with the array or with the dictionaries so how you can do that is for d in dictionary d i c t i'm i'm just using it directly so that you can see it here but you can also have an object declared as dictionary like we did it earlier and then loop it through so let me show you both the ways so first is dictionary so car one is let's say thousand dollars and then car two is two thousand dollars right print d and then space and and here is this information uh, car one and car two what you could do is d1 dictionary it may this will be most of the times will be the case over here not like this but like this where you have a dictionary object created when uh, you want to loop it through that object so for the simplicity i'm just showing you how you can do this so we have declared the dictionary for d in d1 uh, print d space and that's it so both will both is performing same operation the only difference is we have directly declared the dictionary over here but in case of this option the second line we have declared a d1 which is a dictionary type and given this entire declaration within this object and then looping through this object this will be the case that you will be encountering most of the time all right now let's see how you can iterate through set so for s in set one two three four five simple example and then print s this is how you we have declared the set previously if you remember and if i if i press shift enter this is the output of the set that you will get it, it has just unordered the output like uh, we have said earlier it doesn't really take uh, take care of the order of the input that you are giving it, it can be in any order and same is the case with the output okay um, now let's see how you can uh, loop through a range that we have that we have seen earlier so for example for range in one to five print range and so what you get is one two three four five again you can have space as well so you will get a space so this is basically a range so if you have to loop through a range either you can declare the range over here or you can declare the range in an object and then use it with the within the for loop along with the print statement after that what do we have is uh, for the similar example for range in um, 1 to 5 right and then let's say we want to display the range equals to 1 range equals to 2 in in a format like this so how we can do is by utilizing the inbuilt macros like at the rate show range okay and and so what it will give you is output like this range equals to one range equals to two range equals to two three which is like pretty easy for a normal user let's say if the per normal user will not be coding in this and you need to show it what this variable really is or value related to then you can have this variable which is uh, 
which is something we are, which user can understand okay this is range one or two or three or four five similar like this if you have a need you can use at the rate show macro all right um, now let's see how you can use the if conditions within the within the for loop so for example we have for x in one two tan right and we want to only show those values which are divisible by percentage two and if i'm not wrong we are we call them uh yeah we call them even number right x percentage two equals to equals to zero then print x and and that's it so if and for and relatively complex operation that we are doing but simply we are trying to identify the even numbers uh, from the from this range so two four six eight ten right that's what the number which is divisible divisible by two and uh, you can basically then easily do it in just in a minute now as an exercise what you can do is you can look for the prime numbers this is an exercise for you for so what you do if you don't know what are prime numbers do a google google and uh, you will figure it out what the prime numbers are what their calculation is and write a loop like this from the 100 1 to 100 values figure out the prime numbers all right okay so now let's see how you can write a well-defined output so for example what i have is uh, let's say there is a multiplication of 10 or let's say 20 so that's a multiplication between 2 and 10 if that's the equation we are writing we want to write it in a proper format formatted way so this is a new thing which i'm telling you and very very useful so pay attention to this for i in 1 to 10 and j equals to i multiply with 10 so whatever that number is multiply it with the 10 so i 1 uh, sorry 1 multiply with 10 10 2 multiply with 10 20 then it will loop again 3 multiply with 10 30 so on and so forth and now here we want to so print ln because we want a new line after every loop so we want to write uh the we want to display the first variable that means 10 is the multiplication between this value and this value 20 is the multiplication between this value and this value so for this we use this notation dollar and within that variable name dollar j that means 10 is multiplication multiplication between dollar i where is i a bracket i dollar i and 10 right so 10 is multiplication between 1 and 10 so 10 is a static value because everything is getting multiplied with 10 20 which is output of this expression 20 is the multiplication between 2 and 10 so on and so forth all right so let's go ahead and see that is our well-defined output 10 is multiplication between 1 and 10 2 and 20 3 and 30 so on and so forth so that's that's how you can really uh, put the format in place for, uh, within your for loop now let's learn another special keyword which is continue keyword so what happens is earlier if you remember we have seen the this particular expression where we have identified the odd value now using this expression only we will identify the even uh, sorry we identified the even value but we will identify now the odd value without changing anything but using the continue keyword so pay attention to this so first thing is uh, for i in 1 to 10 right if i percentage 2 equals to equals to 0 that means we are identifying even number now we are not writing so we are saying here continue what it is saying don't do anything just move on to a next block of code and do whatever you want to do so that means we are skipping this part over here so continue and and then print 
print ln maybe best way i and I just want you pause this video for a second maybe like 10 or 20 seconds and think about it what output you will get here in this case. Though I even I have told you at the start of this expression but still I would really like you to evaluate how you can figure it out the output it is giving it will strengthen your coding skills. Okay so I hope you have figured it out but if not let's execute this and what we are getting is the odd numbers 13579. So what we are seeing whenever you identify an even number just continue don't do anything and then print the other value which is odd value over here right so same example is just with the continue keyword you can further achieve a different type of calculation or the processing from your business law uh, from the business logic perspective all right now let's move on to something which is uh, while loop and while is condition again condition based loop and its condition is until that condition become false keep on running that loop so for example uh, we have uh, a a equals to 1 right and the the condition that you need to write is like this sorry what i'm doing while a is less than 10 that means keep the loop running when I, up until a is less than 10 right print ln a simple and then increment the value of a a plus equals to 1 so this is a new thing which i am showing you which is nothing but a equals to a plus 1 so just to shorten that we have written a plus 1 a plus equals to 1 which is equivalent to a equals to a plus 1. All right, let's go ahead and see it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So as soon as it has reached 10, it's become, uh, it, it came out of the loop. So that's about how you can write the while loop within the, within the, um, within the Julia and Similar to this, I want you to write an, an exercise along with the uh, similar to the prime numbers, which I have shown you or which I have explained you earlier, how you can uh, do it. Not exactly the prime number, but uh, the odd and even number. And I told you to do the exercise of the prime number on for loop. And similarly, I'm asking you to do the same exercise of prime numbers here in the while loop. So that's pretty much about it uh for the loops per se but i hope you found it helpful and uh, develop some basic understanding about it